Hey folks, welcome to November Day 5. This one is Feather, and I wanted something that was going to be fairly simple because I've fallen a little bit behind, so nothing too complicated. Just a simple feather and working with splines here, so it's super lightweight, super easy to control. Just starting with a curve line, and I'm growing, essentially using like curl noise, so I'm using a repeat zone to do an extrude, and I'm doing that extrusion through a noise field. So each step pushes it a little bit further and you get a much more interesting kind of curly look rather than just displacing with noise where things can kind of get stretched around. So I wanted to make it perpendicular to the tangent of the main spline that goes up the middle so that all of the barbs go out sideways. So I'm using a cross product between the noise field and the curved tangent. And then I'm also just mixing that based on how far through the the growth along each barb we're going, and the barbs are like the hairs that stick out the side of the feather. So at the beginning of the barb, we're following the curved tangent more, and then it goes more towards the noise texture, and then it finishes more towards the curved tangent again. So you can see you get a nice little swoop as it goes up. And then I'm just using some float curves here just to affect the, uh, the amount that that happens between each barb as we go along the feather. So the ones at the tip point more in the curved tangent direction. I've created clumps of them as well, and I did that with some noise earlier on that was um, mapped along the uh, the spline factor for the main curve, and that's just allowed me to get some, some better grouping so that it looks like the barbs have kind of broken apart, because barbs have little hooks on them so they can all connect together, um, but sometimes you see them sort of blocking off like this. At the lower section of the feather, you have a section called the downy barbs, which point in a lot of different directions and they're a bit more fluffy. So I wanted to add a little bit of noise and a little bit of variation to that lower section so the the groupings are much smaller. So it should really only be each, um, each barb has its own noise texture. And then they push more in the noise direction than the tangent direction. So it, it pushes off to the side and down. Creating the meshing is really simple. I'm just using a curve to mesh with a, a uh, circle curve as the profile and then controlling the radius of that just along the spline factor. So very simple, um, a little bit of a bend on the main quill and then the, uh, the, the barbs just taper down to the tip. So at this point, I went from having a straight quill to having one that's a bit more bent. So I just added this displacement right at the beginning. And because everything's based on the curve normal and tangent, it should all follow through pretty straightforward. Uh, it has affected some of the things um, with, so like minimum twist is the default for the splines. So your said direction, like the normal direction for the spline is going to rotate to try and reduce curvature. Um, and alternatively, you might have set up which is going to snap depending on uh, trying to get closest to the Z direction. And then you can also do free, but the default is going to be minimum twist. So if you're not used to working with normals and, um, and how you manipulate them, when you start bending your curve, then you may find that it's going to do something a bit unexpected, especially if you go for quite a strong curvature. In this case, I found that some of the barbs were sort of spreading out too much, like going around the, the quill too much when I started deforming it. So I added another constraint to basically taking another cross product on my noise against the curve normal. So that just made that a little bit more uniform. It was way too flat when I did it fully. So I just used the mix node to mix slightly down towards uh, the previous noise rather than the cross product version. But it just gives you that additional control to have uh, to have the barbs go where you expect them to. So a lot of tweaking. I only really modelled the one side and then I just duplicated it. So I put the all my repeat zone stuff into a group and then just duplicated that group and flipped the direction so it went, went the other way. And then I added some controls so that I can separate um, things like the offset for the grouping and the the direction 
on the one side to the other, and that just made sure that it wasn't perfectly symmetrical. The environment setup is super simple, just a bent, like a photography backdrop. So uh, like a right angle section of mesh with a bevel. And then it took me a little while to find out the visual style that I was looking for. Uh, it's a little bit challenging to know what you're doing. If you're doing something that's very stylized, you may not want to create meshes for each of the barbs, but um, in this case I did. So like you may prefer to do cards and just texture them, and that will give you much more control over how you separate your barb sections. Whereas I'm actually modeling something which is more physically like a feather, but I still wanted it to be pretty stylized through the render. So I stored out a bunch of attributes and that gave me a gradient from zero to one up the length of the whole feather, zero to one along each barb. And then I'm also taking that grouping value that I worked out earlier, um, just to make sure that each of the little subsections, each collection of barbs can also be textured um, with a bit more, just a bit more variation. Because I was working with just noise displacement rather than actually controlling the spline, which might have been more sensible for the actual shape of it, uh, it took me a, a little bit of experimentation to just mess around with the seed on the noise until I found a shape that I liked, and then transformed it into the right position on, on the camera composition. And then again, just tweaking. I felt like the groups of barbs were a little bit too small. It further looked like it was just way too broken up. So I changed the scale of the noise that was going in and that was creating that grouping, the early section, and just reduced the scale so that it was covering a larger area. I just improved that. And again, just shifting my way through different seeds for left and right side of the feather until I found uh, a pairing that I quite liked. Then I also decided to add these sort of sparks around. I wanted them to be based on where the feather was, so I took the points off the feather, deleted them by probability, so using the random value set to boolean, and then I'm basing it on the vertical gradient along the spline, so there's many more points generated at the lower portion of the barbs, and then I'm adding a random value. The distance that they travel I wanted them majoritively to be close to the feather and then just like a few offshoots. So I took a zero to one random value, put that through a power node. If you increase the power, then you essentially create a curve where you have um, most of them being in that lower section and then a few extending up to one. And then you can just multiply that by a random direction. So that gave me these nice fireflies to work with, and I've added a bit of depth of field to the camera just to blow them out a little bit. Probably didn't need to do this, probably could have just done it by changing the scale of the points so they were a little bit bigger when they were closer to the camera, but there we go. Sometimes it's just easier to throw on depth of field. I was having fun with going for like a really intense lighting so super stylized, almost abstracted the feather, uh, but I ended up deciding to give something where you could actually see it a little bit more. And to begin with, I was just using a lot of subsurface scattering and sheen. So the the base color, which was a purple and pink, oh sorry, a blue and a pink, would have this sort of golden sheen over it, and then the back lighting would create pink in the 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 thinner edges. It did look pretty cool, so it made it look glowy, but ended up feeling like it was doing too many things. So pulled that back a bit. I think I might have got rid of subsurface scattering completely, and I definitely turned off the sheen, so it was just a, a much simpler render. 
also threw on a simple animation at the end, just a rotation in the z-axis. So I added a final geometry transform node, and then controlled the z-rotation with the scene time through a map range to map frame, uh, I think it was 0 to 300, to be 0 to some rotation amount, or maybe negative 0.2 to 0.2, something like that. And then that mapped into the, the combined XYZ into the transform geometry. Just made it a really simple looping animation. Nothing too extreme, but it just gives you a little bit of parallax on those fireflies. Hope you learned something, hope you had fun, and I will catch you in the next one.